it very much. And we, uh, and our Australian colleagues are working hard already to get the Chinese and the other associations uh, from the south, south east the Pacific region to get them involved. Okay, I will skip that, but just to tell you uh, what is it. So it's uh, 16 members, executive committee, coming from 16 nations. Uh, here uh, and this, uh, so we elect uh, a new executive committee at each World Congress. So uh, the actual president is Aichi Tanaka from Japan. Um, the past president is Ellen Milner. She is at Princeton, probably so people who are in international political economy. Um, Diane Pendeview from Notre Dame University. Diane is uh, she is responsible for the world for the program of the World Congress of the Sun. Uh, the three vice president is Dr. Juan Carver, Athen from uh, Tunisia, and you have the other voting member. As you can see, it's pretty spread from all the countries. And that's, that's the beauty of it. That's why I'm the other one. That's why I joined the NIPSA, because I thought, that's, let's have a discussion with colleagues. Most of them have been president of their national associations. And I think it's part of it. So they are interesting. Okay. Uh, Uh, the Montreal base, uh, IPSA is pretty much an international descent that we have a Montreal base, the secretary is there. We have activities in Paris, in Italy, journals, and we work with different organizations, the journal is the Rooter in Germany, with base in uh, uh, there uh, an office in Boston. So we are trying to be much more worldwide. And as you will see, we have summer school also over the world. So we are We'll say our garden is the world, essentially, and we are trying to get everywhere we can get to try to help colleagues and beyond your scholar, as yourself and other, to get a sense of uh, the state of the discipline that we're here for. Um, so we have support of different organizations, I'm not helpful, but the International Social Science Council, which is kind of federation of all of our associations. Um, they asked me like, two years ago to organize uh, conference with other organizations that was held in Montreal. Um, the next one is in Durban, South Africa, in the next summer. Um, what was the uh, what is the impact uh, of the new technology on social sciences? That was a great conference. I think we have people from all the disciplines, psychology, uh, uh, biology, environment. So what is the impact now? And this is a big issue. Yes, and for the social sciences, uh, we have Darjan, uh, Mr. Darjan from Harvard, uh, Harvard, about the future of publication, open access, things that we publish. Uh, is the book over? Mr. Darjan said, no, books will still remain for years, so maybe it's a perceived as a dinosaur. So the kind of conference we are in, I'm trying to get and reach out with all the other our colleagues. Uh, with APSA, it's a very good relationship. I'll come back to that later. And, uh, and Europe with the ECPR, the European Consortium of Political Research. Um, because of the topic, just a quick question. Uh, the Europeans have a lot of difficulty usually to organize themselves. The dream of having an APSA in Europe for years, I think since I'm a kid, I think oh, at the university, I think they always, one year, someone, yeah, we should have an European Association of Political Science. Uh, and with the expansion of Europe with uh, 28 countries, oh, we should have another. Then the idea came back again and again. So they've never been able to organize this. They, but they have what they call the European ECPR. They have a good journal, European Political Science and Publishing English. ECPR is a, it's, it's an association of department of political science. It's very different. It's not an association of national association. So their model was to try to bring department around thematic teams or group of research. So it's a very good organization, very well structured, but it goes beyond the borders. So maybe one day you will see an European Association of Political Science, I doubt, but uh, it might be possible, I hope that will happen, but it's, uh, it will be more similar. Okay, so we'll go over each of these points quickly, uh, just to show you where in uh, 10 minutes to go. So, uh, The research committee. For you as researchers, I think the best way to enter IPSA is through the research committee. If you go on the research committee, this is some of your professors sometimes. 
some of my colleagues are members of the research committee. And during the World Congress, this, the research committee organized sessions on the European Act. We have all covered, we have the 49 research committee on different things. The research committee, one way for, if you ask me on the question of uh, what is political science, you can find the same committee on genders and politics and sociology in the, in the sociological association. What we try is that each research committee from all of these organizations work together. So they do that and they work on, uh, uh, we have a research committee on pluralism. Okay, so we have American colleagues, European and others working on the concept of pluralism and trying to work together in the World Congress. So that's uh, important and, and the goal is to, of course, to, uh, to bring uh, greater collaboration between them. Okay, so this is our next two Congress. Conference and symposium, uh, that type of activities, but uh, uh, we try here uh, what it's possible to organize symposium. The reason we do that is uh, if we think there's a topic that we should discuss and about our discipline, like the one in Sao Paulo, what happened to the North South. Uh, we were concerned about the traveling of our colleagues from the South to the North. And why they are not joining us? So why they are not part of the American public science? Or or the Latin American sort of association. Why they are limited, do they have limited access of things and everything? So how could this conference, uh, which would group at the time all the, all the research committees, so we bring all the research committees together, we try to do that each four or five years. You get together, I say. Okay. And they came up with a number of recommendations. And one of their recommendations said, okay, can you establish a Global South uh, uh, Awards or grant programs that we can offer to our colleagues from the South to come to the World Congress. And we did it. We started the World Congress, the, the Global South Award. Uh, that was when Grammy did that from years of Carlisle and before he retired, he said, I want to be committed to that kind of things. I want scholars from the South to come to our work. They don't have the resources, so we will pay for the travel expenses and things. And we have done. We tried to increase, of course, the money for that purpose. And, and that's one of the things, that's the reason we do it. Okay, our publications, uh, of course, if you want to be a truly international publication, you need scholars from all over the world published in an international journal. And this is the goal of the International Political Science Journal. Uh, this journal was created in 1980. Uh, at the time, we were accepting articles, it has two official languages, French and English. Um, I think we should have Spanish at some point. If you look at our webpage, it's in French and English. And I'm, working on the Spanish one soon with the Mexican coming in. I think we should have more for Mexican and maybe Portuguese and other languages in the future. It's just a question of resources of getting more uh, people to do that. But, uh, but that's a way to internationalize our discipline. And the International Global Science Review, uh, that, that was our first uh, task. Comparative words. Um, so Mark is on the Mark is, uh, where is Mark? Uh, Mark is at uh, uh, Amherst. Mentioned. So Mark uh, is the editor with Martin Sarr from Australia, um, and and they do take care of the journal, and it's, uh, it's, it's uh, we're pretty happy of that. It's, it's growing in terms of interest. Uh, a new journal that we just created to uh, help our colleagues uh, across the world. Uh, the, the slide is not right, but it's, it's coming in. The new title is World Political Science. Uh, we bought that from the Gruter as a as an editor. The idea of this journal, and I, that's, a, I feel like, that's a kind of journal I agree for years, and we have it now, which is to the, the best winner, uh, winning articles published in the Japanese Journal of Political Science in Japanese, it is translated and we get access to it. We don't have to wait for years before we get and can read it. I was telling that to my colleague, uh, who mentioned who organized the World Congress in, uh, in Japan in Fukuoka 2006, Siko Kawashima. I said, Iko, I read your piece through your to your uh, to the embassy. The embassy of Japan was sending uh, uh, me a kind of documents uh, called Japanico, which were translating some articles or features about the Japanese society. And all the time, Iko, when there was an election, an Iko article in, J in Japan, probably was published in English. So, so I can get a clue now of what was going on. So, so why taking the knowledge gap? My the goal of this is to reduce the knowledge gap world and people around the world. If somebody has an article published in many languages, 
or it's a best article, the National Association take the pride of translating that and we get give that access to it. It's, it's very important for you to get, or as researchers, I think whatever topic or to get the inside and the, uh, the articles coming from the country. And that, that's, that will, that's where I think we will be an even more global association. So we start this project and now we are, uh, we're pretty proud of that. It's an online, as soon as we have the, act, the article, we put it online. It's a service to the members for us. It's go straight, you got it. What the Gruter is doing in, at, uh, in June, they published uh, 15 articles already online and they put that on the hard copy and they do that once a year. So, uh, so the article is already online. In um, the abstract, you probably use the abstract sometime if you do your research. Uh, the International Political Science Abstract. Um, we started that in 1951. All American publishers want to buy us. And they're all ready to give us millions of dollars, and we refuse to do that. That was our bread and butter for years, essentially, in the 60s and 70s. The abstract is, uh, it's the, uh, is the, uh, it's okay. the abstract of the all article published in all journal of political science in the world, even journal that you are not even aware of. As soon as we discover a journal, we send that to us. We have a team in Paris, six people working at Sciences Po Paris in our office there, and it's Paul Gott. Paul is an American, who worked teach at the American University of Paris for years, as well as French. And uh, Serge Otzig was the, the father of this, this uh, abstract for years. So we did, and, and, and what I was telling you before, uh, that was the idea of the 1950s. How can we know what is published in the world? So when we started that right after we were created, was this idea of trying to get a good overview of the work done by colleagues for all the world. And this is what we continue to do for uh, years and years. So you might sur be surprised. You find an article there published in a remote article in a journal in a, I don't know, Northern uh, Africa in a small country in Ethiopia or whatever. We publish it. It's, if there's a journal somewhere, we get access to it. And when we do our World Congress, we discover new journal. That's the reason we, we see people coming with a book uh, or whatever, or with the publisher stands, and we discover publishers who have books. So that's, that's the goal of the abstract, and, uh, and that's why uh, the American abstract that you have for American start in 1980. You have all the articles before 1980, the word does not exist in the American document. We are, the word for us started in 1951, so, so we can review things uh, prior to you might say, well, I mean, it's not useful to go back and we just need to read an article published in the last uh, 10 years to, to quote there. But still, I think it's important to get uh, that in uh, uh, We did get involved with SAGE for uh, an international uh, encyclopedia of political science. I think your library probably has it. I can check. Usually I go to the library first thing and I check which, which publication your library has. If they don't have it, I go back and I send back uh, but uh, uh, this is a project from Sage, uh, we, um, uh, California on Encyclopedia, and uh, they came to us and said, well, we don't like the American uh, apps of, I was joking with Michael Britton on Encyclopedia, Sage is American this. We don't like the American uh, Encyclopedia. It's on the American scholar. We want a truly international Encyclopedia. We probably from all over the world. Okay, so, okay, we'll do it. So uh, we did that, and uh, and uh, I, I never thought first, as I said this morning, uh, that by publishing an encyclopedia, we are in 2015 now, I think internet and everything, who would be interested by an encyclopedia? There's more and more end books, encyclopedia published now in those years, and the publishers are looking for that even more. And we won the medal for it in New York. We were surprised, say, hey, uh, as one of, in terms of the contribution of colleagues and the in-depthness of the research there, that was quite an original, so we were pretty happy with that. And anyhow, so it's eight volumes, it took a lot of time, and, and that was divided by topic, international relations, and other public policy. Uh, participation is our bulletin that we publish internally. It's a kind of a coffee desk stuff. Uh, just get people uh, use of the news of what's going on in the associations, uh, um, uh, different different topics. Usually we publish once a year at uh, the time of the Congress. 
just a kind of a teaser about what is the World Congress and what is coming. Uh, I invited Mike Katkis myself at the World Congress last summer. Mike is a, is a professor of political science. He was on the Obama, and still still on the Obama Transportation Committee. Um, and, and, and Mike and I, we have a, a dream that one day a fast train will move from Montreal to Boston, and then a student can take a course, take the train in the morning, go take a course at Harvard, and come back to Montreal, and the same thing for a student Boston, take the train in the morning in two hours being in Montreal and then going back to Boston in the evening. One day it will happen, okay? That's what we call closing ties and get uh, more involved. Maybe from Ball State one day. I don't know, but it's uh, <laughs> up north. But, uh, but we have to move there. We are, we are so behind in North America on the fast train. It's unbelievable when you look up. We have the technology, we have everything. We can send people on the moon. Well, we cannot build a train. So we have to, to be hard and get that faster and, and get that. Um, uh, I invited also the Premier, the First Minister of Wales, uh, Carwin Jones. Uh, uh, Carwin Jones is, uh, I asked him, come over and tell us about the future of the UK after the Scottish referendum on independence. What will happen to, to Wales? And Carwin, I never saw a guy giving a so strong speech about Wales in a very nationalist and very defending his, his part of the world and saying, hey, uh, he said, uh, one, one thing struck me, he said, you know, Westminster can dissolve the Welsh Parliament tomorrow just by a piece of legislation. And he came over and said, okay, fine. And he talked about federalism, new form of federalism, is UK move to federalism in the future. And that was before the Scottish referendum. But the Scottish referendum after he said, it doesn't matter what is the outcome. The Scottish have set the tone of the discussion with Cameron. And here are what Cameron has said about Mag's evolution. He said, whatever is the outcome, I'm going to ask for the same thing after. And I check after the Scottish referendum what happened. He is on the track. He told us before what he was going to do. And uh, anyhow, it's an interesting uh, first minister talking about the evolution of power, new structures, and everything. So, uh, so that's the time to get these people on. So you have it, the, the magazine is for that purpose of trying to get uh, some politicians and, uh, and, uh, and, and for some political scientists. Sometimes, sometimes I, I think we are a bit chilly on things that the world is changing and the, time, the concept are changing. We have to, to be a little bit more active and I think that's uh, help us in a way to see the world in different ways. Uh, the Ipsa Polturo is a project we had uh, with Mauro Calise in uh, Napoli is to review everything in political science on the web and to rate them to help students. If it's a good site, let's say the, the Congress Library, five star. If it's a poor site, so we'll give one star. So it was a way of a search engine for helping, but Google is much better now. It's, it's, uh, there's other technology going on very fast. And, uh, so we, we're still doing that. We still keep the, you know, the, this project going. So, the website and everything uh, that we do. If you go on the Excel web page, you will see all of this. Uh, we have a newsletter where you can get all the information on many things going in the world and uh, uh, new papers, new conference going, uh, uh, activities, research, everything you want, it's there. My team there is only, uh, they are just doing that for, for the sake of searching everywhere of everything that relates to our. Uh, we are on Facebook stuff, uh, Twitter, uh, and we were fast. We were faster than Absa. Steve Smith says, hey, he, you are fast. You're on Twitter, Facebook. You have done that. Yes, yes. Of course we have done it. We are. So uh, I'm, I'm always happy when it's faster than Absa. So anyhow, it's kind of a, no, it's, a, it's, it's an inside. Last project, just to tell you about the global political science. Uh, Ipsa Summer School. Um, uh, the ECPR I mentioned before had a summer school in Europe on methods. Uh, if you do methods, you go where? You have the Ann Arbor Summer School, probably, or you go to the Essex Summer School in, in, uh, in Britain. I went to the Essex Summer School for a summer, so I, and, uh, or you might want to go to France, where they have a little one summer school in French on methods. So we imported this idea from the ECPR and said, let's do international uh, uh, 
summer school on methods. So we have done the first one in Sao Paulo, Brazil. We do that outside of the, we go in the south. Singapore, Stellenbosch, South Africa. Um, I mentioned Singapore. Uh, we're going probably to Egypt very soon. So we are going all over to try to train students on qualitative and quantitative methods with the best color, it's a two week courses. And the one in, in Latin America, in Sao Paulo, now it's attracting over 400, 500 students each summer. It's amazing, the way it started with the, about 60 students, they need that, they need it desperately, more than we expected in terms of methods, and they love it. So they almost created now an alumni of the summer school of Sao Paulo, uh, and, uh, and it's, it's just moving on and uh, more and more. So it's on social science research methods. We don't want to limit to political science, but it's still political science, but it's more global than that. Uh, so this is pictures of uh, my host today and our uh, with with Angeline, uh, his daughter. So uh, as I said, Angeline now is, is great at each World Congress she gave her, sorry, her concert. She has a Grammy Awards winner and uh, and she studied with Messia in Paris. So I love uh, music. So in Fukuoka 2006, that was the first time, and then it became a tradition. So it's part of the tradition. We like the father for that, uh, but the daughters do a marvelous job as well. It's not an academic conference, but it, look at the number of people who were there. They were amazed that seeing that. You know, it's a, it's part of culture. It's part of our task, I would say, all over. That's why I like to give this this pictures. It's an IPSA Congress is not only a, a, a scientific event; it's a cultural event, and it's a personal event. And I will close on that because I think that that's what is IPSA. This is where we have to to get out of our. Uh, uh, our, our place some time, and there's a lot of opportunity. What I want, the message I really want to give, I came from Montreal. I decided to go to, uh, I was a bit, my age, I think, I, I found Canada too small for my mindset. I said, well, where should I go? Well, I, I, I went to the computer and I got the computer and the SPSS file was written on the top. Vogel Back Computing Center, Northwestern University. I said, okay, that's where I want to go. And the chance in life made that I was able to go there, I got a scholarship, and I went there. And after that, uh, and it's a, well, I, I went to Northwestern because of the comparative nature, and I, I love it. And then after that, Ted Louis and other colleagues, uh, when I said, well, why are you are not organizing the World Congress? They came over in Montreal one summer, John Coakley passed it. They said, you, I think you are good. You can do that. They have just organized the World Congress. Well, say, okay. I said, okay, well, I will organize the World Congress in 2000. Uh, after, at the time, they said, well, you should be also a member of the executive committee. Okay, they said, we have to present the World Congress. But two years after, I just joined IPSO at the time, I knew a little thing, and, just, and they said, well, we are searching for a secretary general, we didn't find any. I think you should do it. So well, I say yes again. So, so my life is like that, I was tell you. I, I never asked none of these for things, which is not true, but it's still, things are going over you, and. Uh, I was supposed to be, my mandate as secretary general was supposed to end in 2006. We have a rotating secretary. We decided to keep it in Montreal. It was more convenient. I can bring the archive from everywhere and do a good, uh, good research on that. Uh, I have a young scholar from Bordeaux. I searched everywhere to tell you on the epistemology of science. I wanted a scholar, I don't think you know I said, who is working on science and politics, on the history of science. And I found a PhD student, he was in Bordeaux. I tell him, come over, spend a semester, and open our boxes. And that was part of his dissertation. And I'm proud of that. He opened the letters of uh, Calder, all of these letters of the time, all in small papers, and, uh, and then we try to keep them. Uh, so this is IPSO in general, and uh, I'm still Secretary General. I don't believe it, uh, still continue to be there. Uh, of course, it's, uh, now, now I think IPSO is a more International, uh, we have more activities, and it's it's and for you, I think it's a uh, it's a good place to go and to do things that you want. To, uh, uh, and we have an international student association as well, and so it's the beginning, I think, for your career. It, it, don't see it, and I, I was mentioning when I was a student, I say, wow, going to the international political science, 
that's something big, you know. It's that only a, no, it's not that. Go there. It's the, just enter. Just enter. Uh, people are very open in the sense that it's a group called the Research mm -hmm. Committee. They are there to help. They are not there to compete. We are not in a competing world. We are international in the sense that it's not the same kind of being in the national organizations. We're national association. We're there to improve the, the, the research. So I hope you enjoy your, my little presentation. I'm open to any question. I, I know I've been longer than I should be. Uh, I hope I answered the question about the global development of science through a bit of an administrative perspective, but at the same time, uh, we still have a lot of work to do. So we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa Souvenir, for you. Thank you. International Police Association of Boston University is a present this certificate in appreciation of the excellent lecture of Dr. La Lachapot at Boston University on March 16, 2015. Not necessarily what we have to look over other options, whatever I mean. And I should be ready to change the World Congress in three months. Look up APSA in New Orleans. Sure. What do you do? Hey, you have to cancel that. I was so pity for Michael to call me and say, hey, what are we doing? When you have a disaster or something, I cannot control that. At least we, we are going in countries where there's not too much weather questions or problems. Uh, so, so Stories, I don't, Durban was the worst for me, the most difficult one. The war in Iraq, losing our American colleagues who didn't want to travel, I found that opinion because we were going there really to help the South Africans and helping them to build any African politics association. And the stress came out and all of this. We canceled our EC meeting in Istanbul at the time, 2003, because of the, the war. People did not realize that Istanbul is like from here to California, to, to the, the border of Europe. If I gave a map to everyone, but it's a map. It's far Istanbul. Of course, it's a, it's, it's a breakaway or it's a place to go for some of the terrorists today, but it's still far, far, far. But the insecurity there. We hold our uh, EC finally in Istanbul, and um, we were at the Palace uh, Hotel near the U.S., the uh, British Embassy, and the British Council, uh, the British office, and the British office was about where we were. So we were about three corners from where it was. So, uh, so yes, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, it's been, can be risky, and we know that South Africa can be in risky places. But, but overall, it's not so risky. When, if you can control things, we know where we are going. Uh, I think it's worse going in the south of Chicago. But, uh, <laughs> sometime when I was a student, uh, you have just to know where you are going and what, how you manage things and colleagues come over. And, and Istanbul is a very European city now. It's grown tremendously over the years. All these, uh, so, so I think, no, it's, it's the thing we have to take care of, and uh, that's my responsibility. Yes? Uh, what would you say your future goals are as an organization? Like, do you have any big projects that are coming up or anything like that? Uh, big projects. Uh, uh, 
to have more official, to more languages, I would say. Yeah, that, that we can reach out more uh, people in Latin America, having more publication, probably in Spanish. Uh, reach the Arab world. It's, that's why we go to Istanbul. We need to reach colleagues there. We need to reach more colleagues in Africa. We, that's, that's our goal. And it's, it's a, it might seem as slow, but I think it's fast. Where we were, where we were I would say, uh, in, after the fall of Berlin Wall in 89, and where we are as a new country, we have to this thing as well, very rapidly. And I said this morning, thanks to globalization, we can go from global to local to global much easier. It's much easier now. People travel more. There's more possibility for uh, going abroad. Uh, I've always been improved, uh, impressed by the, uh, the Peace Corps, the American Peace Corps. Uh, colleagues when I'm nursing or just going abroad and spending. It's important. This is a part of American culture and history. And uh, that's the kind of thing we have to develop in this as well. Uh, I would like to do one thing uh, very rapidly with them short term. Uh, I was an international observer for the referendum in Scotland. Uh, I work for the electoral commissions. And you can register. That was easy. You just had to go on their web page. The electoral commission said, here it is. Well, you can, if you want to register, send your passport, all the information, the documentation. I send everything as a Dardanelles citizen. And I said, I want to be there. Of course, I had to do conferences and talk with colleagues at New York at Denver at the time, because they were organizing panels and things. But anyhow, I said, I want to be an observer there. And I was an observer. I was able to see the boat coming in. I went to the polling stations. I would like, and I know we have this program, the chief electoral officer in Canada had this program to send students to go abroad during elections and to monitor elections. IDEA and Stockholm, that's where it That's the kind of things I think IPSA will be in our mandate. That we send a number of observers to, uh, so that's the discussion I have with people on our side. I saw it even in, in uh, a strange thing because I, I saw Scottish Americans there. As I saw Scottish Canadians there. Uh, the Scottish Canadians, I, 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 I was joking with them because they, they said, you want Scotland to come independent? Like, yes, 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 okay. And do you want Quebec to become independent? No, 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 no. So, <laughs> so anyhow, that's depend where you are located and where you think about the. Uh, that was a bit strange, anyhow. But it's, uh, but it's it's, it's interesting. Uh, party conventions, for example, the Democrats and the Republicans. I cover U.S. elections in Canada on television, so I usually go to both conventions. It's a great time to go for politics. Uh, I was in Denver with Obama. Uh, Ask everybody, put your sale where you are coming from. I just remember those big screen people from all over the world in Denver. Denver was the center of the world at, at that time. It was just with the number. They said, and if so, I want to do that one day. Everybody would be at the World Congress. I would tell them, okay, type on your phone, the iPhone, and say, here, it's, it's, uh, it's the world. It's here, it's here in Montreal or in Istanbul. Yes, sir. How many uh, professionals attend your conference? Not, not people, but uh, professionals. 3,000. Well, 